Okay, woohoo! All right. What's up guys and welcome to today's video. So as you guys see by the title, we're gonna talk a little bit about muscle growth. And so we're gonna talk about muscle growth and how it relates to building a social media following. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about muscle growth. And as someone who's been building muscle or like trying to build muscle for years, I know how, how slow of a process that it can be and how hard it can be. Like slow as hell, which is why I think the whole like lifting weights and building muscle will make you look bulky argument. That's completely hysterical to me because it takes so much time. So for my body type and my genetics, I have it a little bit easier when it comes to muscle growth than most people do. I am an easy gainer, I gain muscle pretty easily, but I also gain fat pretty easily as well. And then there's those people that are just super lucky and they're like those genetic freaks that we all hate because they can eat everything and they can just build a bunch of muscle and stay really lean and like those are some, some people are just like genetic freaks like that. And then, and that's okay. Like I said before, they definitely work hard and they deserve their muscle. You can't just put on muscle without doing anything, like you'll still have to work for it. But again, some people just have like an easier time than others. And then on the other side of the coin, we have like the hard gainers. So those people that really struggle to put on muscle, they eat so much food and they train really hard and they still like inch slowly but surely and put on muscle. Those are like the ectomorph type people that are like naturally slender and they just struggle to put on weight. And some people use steroids to help their muscles grow more quickly. And some people consider that cheating and some people don't. A lot of the time you can't really tell who's using and who's not. It's really up to speculation because there's no particular body type that's just like 100% yes, they're using that. You can make speculations all you want, but you can't really tell a lot of the time. So when it does come to building muscle, there are a few key components. So training hard and heavy, eating in a surplus, consuming enough protein, and doing these three things over a long, long, consistent period of time. So in order to make sure that the weight that you do gain is of quality and of quality lean body mass, you have to make sure that you're eating the right foods and you're not eating too much over your caloric limit. Otherwise, you'll just gain a bunch of fat that you don't want. So this is pretty simple, right? Like it makes sense. And well, this is essentially the same thing as growing your following on social media. Okay, yeah, we're gonna sit down in our normal spot because that camera back and forth thing was cool but really exhausting. <laughs> Obviously, since I've been sharing a lot about social media growth, I have a program on social media, my students and people on Instagram are like now asking me more about, about growth and like asking these things like why is mine not growing as much as I thought it would and all of these kinds of like questions about their growth and like what they could be doing better, what they're doing wrong, all this stuff, right? So if we go ahead and compare it to muscle building, sometimes we're comparing ourselves to those people who might just have an easier time doing it. <laughs> So the people that we compare ourselves to, maybe they got posted on a certain page a bunch of times, or maybe something on their YouTube channel went viral, or like something that maybe is something that we can't control, but we're comparing ourselves to those people who may have had that, maybe something that was lucky for them. And of course, for people to like still want to follow, their stuff still has to be good. They have to have good quality content, or maybe it's valuable or interesting or whatever. Their stuff still has to be good, so we can't discredit those people there. But maybe they were just in the right place at the right time, or like something happened that they couldn't control and you can't control either. And again, maybe they just had more opportunity to begin with, and that is completely okay, but it's just important to be aware of that. Only because it's important to just be self-aware when we're trying to compare ourselves to other people so just be aware that some people may have had it easy. However, there are people that just have a really hard time. And like, I know some of these people too that have really good stuff and they post consistently and they have great hashtags and they do the right things and they feel like they're doing everything they possibly can. They've done their research, they've asked their questions and they've done the right things, but it's just not kind of going as fast as they would like it to. And then there's also some people that use different like tactics to grow their following. Like maybe they're buying their followers or maybe they're doing like a follow unfollow type of deal or maybe they're paying big pages to shout them out or maybe they're using like a robot to comment to make sure that they're doing their engagement thing. Like everyone says engagement is something that you have to do. So like, let me get someone to do it for me. And I mean, they're, they're kind of sketch, but they are done pretty often because people know that that's what works, right? It's kind of like the steroids thing with fitness. It's not like that bad, it depends on obviously like if you're using it for the wrong reasons and all that stuff, we can go into that for a whole nother video, but it happens, it's common, and it's there. 
and again, we can make speculations, but we never really truly know who's doing it and what's going on and why they're doing it, the intent behind it. There was even an article that I found on Facebook recently. I will try to find the article. I will find the article and put it right here. But the article even said that they created two fake Instagram accounts where they used stock photos and they bought their followers and then they bought their likes and companies still reached out to them and they still paid these fake accounts that had built up a fake following with fake likes and fake engagement. Companies still see that as something that's valuable and you can fake it till you make it and you can still get paid, which is just absolutely insane, but it is a thing that happens. So it's good to be aware of that when we're trying to build our own thing and then we see other people doing something that you never really know what's going on. So look, the comparisons that I'm trying to make here between muscle building and growing a following are this. Usually it's a slow process for most people. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen with some magical tactic. You have to put in the time and the work and be consistent. And then if you're trying to compare yourself, again, same thing with muscle building and like growing a following or growing a business. You might be comparing your chapter one to someone else's chapter 15, or you might be comparing apples and oranges, and you really truly can't sit and just take someone else's thing and and like wonder why it's not the same thing for you because it's so different, it's so individualistic. But there are a few things that I have found grow my following and other people's following. This is like normal across the board and it's something that still works across the board regardless of if you're growing slowly, if you're growing quickly, whatever rate you're growing at. So the two biggest things I have found to definitely grow your following no matter what is number one, consistency. So consistency in posting and consistency in engaging with your audience. It's not just about comedy back, it's not just about liking, it's about creating relationships. So it's consistency and engagement. Those are the two things that no matter what, there will be more people connected to you. Number one, based off of how the apps actually work, the apps like you to use them back and forth and they like you to engage. So they will push your stuff out more when you're engaging and when you're using it the way that it's meant to be used, like Instagram, when you're using Instagram stories, when you're doing all the things, when you're messaging people back and forth, when people are commenting on your stuff and you're getting that back and forth often. It's like building a friendship. Like you have to have a conversation instead of just posting and then letting it sit. Like you have to have like communication back and forth. So consistency and engagement are the two things that will grow your following regardless of how slow you're growing. And then there's some things that'll just get your numbers up. So it's kind of like the muscle building and those are like the building lean body mass type of things that are gonna help you build that quality muscle, those quality audience members, supporters, followers, friends, whatever. And then there's some things that'll help you build, but it might be more of like body fat building. So it's maybe numbers that you might not necessarily want. They might not necessarily be your ideal audience, your ideal client, the people that you actually want to be like in your tribe, but they will help you get your numbers up. So things like posting butt selfies, which is a thing that people do with fitness for sure because when you post a picture of your butt or a picture of yourself in leggings and I do it too I try not to do it too often but you know what it's gonna get double the likes than something of your face and that's really sad but it's true sometimes I'll use it as more of like a pull people in and then hopefully they read the, the uh, inspiring caption kind of thing and then if it's a, if it's a guy they might not read the caption, but for the most part, it's a thing that still helps get your numbers up and that could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. I think eyeballs in general, if you want more eyeballs, it depends on what you want them for, but we're gonna get to that. Posting comparisons and infographics are definitely a thing on Instagram now. A comparison of like real life versus Instagram or like whatever, there's controversy about that, but it's a thing that works. It's a thing that gets eyeballs because people click on that. Instagram went from like, just pose photos to now people are like showing the behind the scenes of their post photos. And again, I've done that. I had a picture go viral because of that. I got in Cosmopolitan because of that. So that's definitely a thing that gets the numbers up. Another thing, infographics. Those are like a thing now for sure. Like Fitness IQ was one of the first people who started doing infographics, which if you don't know what that is, I'm gonna insert it here. One of these things. So something that has words on it, that has graphics on it, that has like little emojis that just catch your attention and they get you to quickly learn something that's new. And I think they're awesome. I actually follow a bunch of those pages and I really like them and I engage with them a ton. Doing a 10,000 calorie challenge. That is a thing that YouTubers do, especially fitness, because it's really interesting to see someone with abs eat 10,000 calories in one day. And you know what? Those videos always get like a million views on them. So that's another way to get eyeballs and numbers to go up. And yeah, there's like a few other things. Comment some below. Like I want to hear other things that you guys have seen. Comment some below of like a few things that just work in terms of number growth. And then people are like becoming aware that they work. So they do them. 
And none of these things are bad per se. I'm not saying like, don't do these. I'm not saying that they're negative. I'm not saying that they're something that you shouldn't be doing. But the next question that I wanna ask you guys is think about this. Why do you want to grow a following? Just ask yourself why, like what is the purpose? What is your purpose of wanting to have more people looking at you and looking at your stuff? Is it because you have like a bigger vision and a big message to share? And kind of like with muscle building, why you wanna build muscle that would equate to maybe you wanna feel more confident and that you want um, to be around more confident people? Or is it because you feel like you're gonna have FOMO or you want more money or you want more ego boost and like you're just looking for the likes and you're looking for people to give you compliments and stuff like that and that's kind of similar with muscle building. Like there's a surface level reason for wanting to build muscle for a lot of people and that's okay too, but like kind of ask yourself that, you know? And you know, maybe it's somewhere in between, but when you ask yourself why and then you have your why, you like have it within you, that is what keeps you going during the times that aren't so fun. When things get tough, so when you're an entrepreneur, things might get lonely, things might get difficult, you have to do your own taxes, you have to find insurance, you have to save 30% of what you make and then give it to the government at the end of the year. And like sometimes you don't know that and sometimes at the end of the year, your first year, you're like, oh shit. You have to hire different kinds of people like CPAs and accountants and bookkeepers and maybe people that do certain things for you or maybe you don't and maybe you do it all on your own and then maybe you're spending 16 hours a day working for yourself and maybe you're sitting at your laptop for hours on end because you work online and you work from home and you sit in your pajamas and then maybe your pajamas make you really sedentary and tired and then all you do is sit at home all day and then you don't talk to anybody. All these things that like aren't that exciting. Maybe you're putting your heart on your sleeve and you're putting yourself out there and some people don't like it and then it makes you sad and then you get anxious. Having your why is what keeps you pushing past all those things. So if you're kind of doing this just for the wrong reasons and you're just looking like for tips on building a following because you have FOMO and you you want to have a cool audience too and you want to say that you have all these followers, right? It's like a credibility factor nowadays too. Like people ask you and like if if they look at your page and like, oh, you got like lots of numbers there. I get that all the time. It's like absolutely weird for me to give someone my Instagram that I just met and they're like, oh, I'm like, please don't do that. I would love for you to comment below and write down what your why is, why you want to build an audience, why you would like to do this. But I would love to learn what your guys' why is. Thank you guys for watching the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really liked making it. I love these kinds of topic talks and just sit down learn about things and mindset uh, changes and perspectives and all of that stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy it too. Thank you guys for listening and I will catch you in the next one. Oh, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Like with the like, like thumbs up thing that's like right down there. There's like a thumbs down, but don't click that one. Like click this one because it's the good one. And you guys like this video, hopefully. Awesome, right? Okay, bye. <laughs>